Joining us now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, man, that's going to be returning to the cage, Shamrock FC No Mercy on April the 16th in St. Louis as he is going to be fighting for the Shamrock FC lightweight title. Is it Isaac Purnell, who's 4-0 in his career, taking on Evan Elder. Isaac, appreciate the time. Uh, first off, how's training camp been? Training camp's been, uh, it's been good, but uh, it's been rough as well. So just pushing through... Um, you know, making, making sure all my my uh, flaws are tightened up, I guess, or the holes in my game are fixed. You know, is that really? You know, I mean, obviously you have the fight coming up, but is that pretty much you know kind of the mentality of just you know maybe it's it's more of a self evaluation of yourself and, and making sure that you know you're improving on those areas that you feel you need to improve on. Yes, it's it's more of a of an area of making less mistakes and capitalizing whenever they make mistakes. That's, that's what I'm looking forward to doing. And of course, uh, you know, very young here in your amateur career. First off, what, what drew you to MMA? Um, I, I used to, like I played football uh, in high school. I was a first team all state wide receiver and, and, uh, kind of, you know, I could have went off to college and all that had a, had a scholarship and all that to college and ended up, um, I guess, you know, having children and kind of had like a, a breakdown moment where I thought my life was over and everything was done for me. And uh, my good buddy, Justin Lawrence, um, who I also played football with in grade school, um, he knew I was, you know, a really good athlete. He was like, hey, man, you should come down and try kickboxing, you know, just to stay in shape. I think you and my, my dad would really like you. So I came down and I kickboxed for about a year. Uh, I went to nationals, won nationals a couple of times, uh, Golden Gloves a couple of times in St. Louis. Um and then finally, you know, my trainer sat me down and, and decided one day, you know, hey, let's transfer over to MMA and see how this goes. And I said, all right. You know, some guys will say it's an instant love. Some guys will say it took some time for you. What, what, what Where do you kind of stand in terms of was it instantly you're like, man, I really love this sport? Yeah, it was It was after my first MMA win, it was almost instantaneous, you know, because you're, you're in there by yourself, but you also have a team behind you that helps you. Um, so I guess as much work as you put in, like I naturally, I'm a hard worker. You know, I work eight hours a day in, on a, on a construction, uh, site every day. Um, I work for understall construction and, you know, I'm used to rough times and, and, and pushing through things, you know, and that's what I love about fighting and training is that, you know, no matter how hard you, you work, you're going to get out what you put in, you know, as, it, as we're on a team, a football team, a basketball team, you're only going to be as good as the weakest link. You know what I'm saying? I've had an opportunity to talk to a lot of guys, whether, you know, is at the high school level, college level, pro level, that have made that transition over to mixed martial arts. And, and I've always asked them, how do they feel uh, their their abilities from the football field are able to transition into mixed martial arts? For you, playing wide receiver, uh, what is maybe movement one of the things that has really been one of the skills you've taken from the football field in, into the mixed martial arts uh, competition? Uh, movement flexibility, I feel, um, my hips are very unorthodox. I'm all over the place with my hips and my movement, I feel is going to be key to this fight. Uh, I'm working angles, you know, like I said, Justin Lawrence, his brother, his younger brother, Dalton, uh, Voiles is a division one wrestler at, uh, Mizzou. So I get to work with him a lot when he comes home and he's home now. And, uh, you know, as far as football goes, the footwork, um, I'm used to all that. And, uh, you know, to transfer over from football as well. I got other experience with track. I was, I was on the uh, state track team and, and placed seventh and ninth in state and, and 100 and 200 and stuff like that. So I feel my athletic ability has transferred over. I'm not as stiff as a lot of guys that I see or a lot of guys that I've, I've faced, you know, I'm more of a loose fighter. Um, I guess that kind of helps with my hips and shoulders too. So you mentioned what you feel that movement's going to be a key to this fight. Is it just simply because of, you know, that's what you, you believe in terms of what you're looking to do? Or is it something that when you look at your opponent, you, you understand that, you know, a, a big key to victory is being able to move around and, and to stay away from his strikes? Uh, yeah, that's with anybody. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't feel I need to, you know, do more or do less here. I'm just going to do what I know to do. And that's move, you know, in and out move, one, two, three, move, uh, you know, fake a couple of things, shoulder fakes, you know, that's that's what I work on no matter who I'm f sparring or fighting, you know what I'm saying? 
And when you think of, when you hear the name Evan Elder, what what comes to mind? I mean, is it uh, is it just merely hey that that's the next guy, that's the the next challenge in front of me, or you know maybe do you think about man he he does this really well and and I got to make sure I avoid that. Uh, well, the way I look at it is uh, anybody's a threat. You know, uh, I look at it, Evan Elder as a guy who's in the in the way of something I've been chasing and something I've been working hard for. You know. Um, like I said, I, I, I do manual labor and I'm not looking to do this the rest of my life. I'm looking to transfer over to, you know, changing my fight or training full time. And I just look at it as he's in the way of stopping me from doing that and also taking from my children. You know what I'm saying? What does your family think about you being a fighter? Uh, they're really, you know, they're kind of timid about it. They're kind of scared, but you know, they, they understand with all the long hours I put in, uh, you know, five days a week, sometimes six. Um, they they know that I'm going to be, you know, I'm well prepared to protect myself, you know, and and uh, they, they support me, you know. Of course they're afraid and anything can happen, you know. And that's why I go out there with the mindset of anything can happen and I'm ready for anything that does happen. Any, so far or in your career, 4-0 in your career, any major lessons you've learned so far in this sport that uh, really stick with you in, in a day-in, day-out basis? Uh, well, I'm, I'm also, I'm a right hander and I fight Southpaw, which is kind of weird. Um, I, I transferred over. My trainer made me do that. Um, he saw a better opening with that. And still to this day, think the less, uh, lessons I've learned are step to the weak side. You know, that I, I don't have issues with it as much anymore, but step to the weak side and, and always keep the, keep the hands up and the chin down. You know, that's, that's the number one factor in any fight. I don't care who you are. You know, if you don't have good movement, that's what you got to do. And even if you do have good movement, you got to keep yourself protected. So that's the main keys I go with. When it comes to this fight, come up here on April the 16th at Shamrock FC, no mercy against Evan Elder. Is it is a simple prediction that, you know, you're going to walk away with the title or is there a little more to it? I expect it to be a, a grind out war. You know, I expect him to be a tough guy. Um, He's the toughest guy I faced, obviously, you know, but he's not tougher than the guys I train with. And uh, I'm, I'm expecting to walk away with this title. Um, and if he does, he, he's, he's going to either have to knock me out or, or break something or, or kill me to do, you know, to do what he needs to do to get that title. Because uh, I look at this title as my lifeline. You know, I, I, it's, it's a title to keep me relevant and to keep me going, you know, and, and it's not only for me, it's, my brother and my sister had the exact same birthday that day, you know, so I'm planning on taking that title home for them. And, of course, this fight coming up here on April the 16th. Isaac, I really do appreciate time. Good luck in the fight, man. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for having me.